there's a sense of not belonging here, being stuck between cultures, um, being at home one, one part of themselves and then being outside another part of themselves and not truly feeling like they belong anywhere. And I was trying to fit in, right? Uh, and when you're always trying to fit in, there, there's a lot of times, you know, the experience of anxiety um, and, and challenges around self-esteem and self-worth because a lot of times you're being told that um, what you're doing isn't, isn't the right thing. What you're doing is weird or strange, right? Um, and and uh, for me, it is working my clients around identity and understanding you know, who they are. They're a culmination of a whole bunch of things, all their experiences in their life. And that's a beautiful thing. That's such a beautiful thing, right? Um, and it's really to, to help them with figuring out, okay, in whatever moment, which part of myself do I want to show and reveal? Um, create that kind of flexibility and that kind of possibility that you are a culmination of all these things. So in every moment, you get to decide which part of you you want to, you want to appear when you're in a space, when you're with other people. Um, and I think that's such a great thing is that you still have this authenticity about you because you know this part is one part of you. It's still part of you. It may not be everything. But that's the great thing about having, having so many different experiences is that you have so many different identities. So let's, let's embrace all of it. And let's have you become authentic, be who you are. And instead of trying to fit in and survive the situation and survive everything going on around you, let's have you be you and thrive at being you. Imagine as a child growing up and always being told that, you know, they're weird or they're, or there's something wrong with them just because, you know, they, they aren't white. They aren't, they aren't, you know, this North American, North American kind of uh, white, white culture person, right? Um, and, and, um, and it really does a lot of damage to a person when you tell them constantly every day, every message I, that is being sent to them is that there's something wrong with them. Um, and that, and um, that really, really, um, really messes with a person's mind, um, and how they develop with you know just having uh, healthy self esteem and healthy self worth, right? Um, that message is so hard to fend off. That message is so hard to just tell yourself, "There's nothing wrong with me." That that um, these messages are, are just people telling me and putting me down, right? And then when you experience so many years of that, you start to, to believe it. You start to believe that you, there is something wrong with you. And then when you grow up, all, all you're trying to do is trying to prove yourself or trying to, to play it safe or trying to you know, be what other people think you should be. Um, and that's what racism does to you. Racism makes you want, just want to, um, want to get rid of this important and integral part of who you are um, and just be and pretend that you can be like everybody else, even though this integral part of you is such a beautiful thing, right? It's such an amazing thing where, where, you know, diversity and being different is so amazing. But when it's being told that it's, it's, it's bad, then it just, it's just, it's just heartbreaking for me to, to hear about my clients talk about that, uh, and, and know that that has, they've experienced just years and years of racism. And now, and now they're taking the courage to, to, to get themselves away from it and to rebuild themselves up. So my work is primarily with uh, BIPOC uh, and people of color. Um, and a lot of my work is really building on, um, on the comfort trying to get comfortable with the different parts inside of you. The parts that you've pushed away because you've experienced discrimination, racism, um, and any other isms, right? Um, is really to go back and figure out which are those parts that you've kind of tried to hide, uh, that you've kind of screamed at and, and try to push away, um, that you've always been angry with when those parts came up, is really to go back and take a look at those parts. And, um, and embrace it and learn to love it, learn to embrace it, learn to take care of it. Um, and it's not easy work. It's actually really difficult, right? Because um, those were the parts that you, you learned to hide. Those were the parts that you learned to never show people because um, others have always told you that those parts were not appropriate. Um, and it kind of leaves you fragmented. You have these parts, but you ignore them and you pretend they're not here. 
And instead of being fragmented, what I really want to do is um, to build an integration, to build the ing integration of all the parts that is part of you and create you as a whole person, not as a fragmented person, but as a whole integrated person. So you can go out there and be exactly who you are and, and know that you're being authentically you because it's so tiring to always have to to always have to monitor yourself, to always have to watch yourself and, and hide certain parts. So I want you to be able to be authentically who you are and really embrace that and really, really love those parts, truly love those parts. And that's the work that I want to do with clients. The first level of work is really to, to um, problem solve and build strategies, right? Because um, a lot of times clients come in, <clears throat> they're experiencing difficulties and challenges in their everyday life. Um, and I want to be able to right off the bat offer them some kind of way to, to, to deal with those struggles. So I, what I find is that cognitive behavioral therapy and solution-focused um, therapy works really well. Uh, it's really immediately to build skills around how do I analyze the situation, how do I, um, how do I manage myself in those situations, um, and, and, um, and deal with it right, right there and then. And then... The second level that I work with is um, diving deeper. Um, so why, why are certain things such a challenge for you in your everyday life? Understanding that, understanding the relationship between how you feel, how you respond to people, and, um, and things that have happened to you in the past or unpleasant things that have happened to you in the past. Um, and for that, I, I am very much um, focused on um, emotion-focused therapy, really focusing down on the emotion, um, what are the triggers, how, what is the history of this emotion, um, and how, does it how did it develop into, into what it is today, and why you respond to it in this way. Um, and um, and uh, another thing that I really gravitate to and use a lot is uh, parts work, so the different parts of, uh, of who you are as a person. Um, and really looking at all the different parts. And I find that it is really helpful when we do parts work for people who, who want to hide certain parts about themselves, who, who don't like certain parts about themselves and want to just get rid of, right? And, that, and that's very much related to um, the BIPOC and people of color um, community where they want to hide certain parts about themselves um, due to you know, past racism, past hurt, um, or past ism, whatever discrimination that they felt. Um, so let's bring that to the surface. Let's understand those parts a little bit better. Um, and, and let's learn about how to take care of those parts because those parts are the parts that are the most hurt, um, but also the parts that we're most scared of to show to other people. So let's figure out what we can do for them.